all know how to design antennas, right? I mean, it is pretty easy. In fact, you can design one without even knowing it. Just route a few signal traces on your PCB right over a gap in the ground plane. Send your design off to manufacturing, grab the kids, and head to a theme park. <laughs> hey, boss, yeah, I'm on a water ride right now. Isn't that cool? Oh, wait, what? Failed EMI testing? Oh, oops. Oh, yeah, you're you're breaking up. Uh, it must be water in my phone or something. Oh, shoot, better brush up my resume when I get home. Of course, when it comes to designing antennas on purpose, things get much trickier, particularly with today's active antennas, MIMO, beamforming. It's enough to make your head spin. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Kenneth Schott from AVX, and we're going to talk about choosing and tuning a high-performance antenna design for your next project. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about antenna design from AVX. Hi, Kenneth. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia, for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, so I understand that AVX acquired Ethertronics lately. So tell me, who are you guys and what are you up to? So Ethertronics was acquired by AVX in 2018, and uh, we are a global network of world-class design centers and low-cost manufacturing. Ethertronics is a global network of high-class design centers and low-cost manufacturing operations around the entire world. We are leaders in the advanced antenna systems and technology, and we provide products ranging from mobile all the way to Wi-Fi and Internet of Things. We have over 2 billion antennas sold today with over 212 patents to our name. In collaboration, what we hold a lot of value to our team is 80% or more of our team here are engineers, which hold the value and the key to the success of the antenna technology. Oh, cool. That many engineers. That's my kind of people. Okay, let's dive in and talk about some of the technologies and products and services you guys offer. We offer a wide range of portfolio of products. To start, we offer passive antennas, ranging from standard antennas to custom antennas. The standard antennas are more of the off-the-shelf parts. The custom antennas, those are more of a hands-on approach where we'll work with the development teams to design a custom antenna for a specific device. To continue the portfolio, we offer the Ether chip. It's an RF silicone chip that we currently have developed here at our facility. It ranges from variable capacitors to RF switches. And what we pride ourselves with is our active steering RFIC. Again, our entire system together is called the Antenna Active System that has the steering chip, impedance matching, as well as band switching, and a software algorithm that we developed internally here at our facility. Modules, we also have a wide range of active technology modules that we offer. And one key aspect of our company that sort of takes us past everyone else is that we design our own test facility and test chambers. A lot of other facilities will grab that from somewhere else and say, look what we can do. We design what we can do. And this really shows a clear understanding of our capabilities. And then to end on that, the services that we offer is ranges from the testing to RF consulting all the way down to manufacturing. Okay, the services are really helpful for me because I've always been kind of a digital person. So it's nice to have some help on the RF side. I'm here for you. So it seems like the challenges with antenna design vary significantly depending on your frequency and your form factor. Now, how do you guys cover the whole spectrum of antennas? So that's a very good problem that you brought up. And this is the big problem that a lot of the design engineers are facing today. What we look at is we identify what markets need what antennas and we identify those product sizes. And then from there, we pinpoint those sizes and we design our standard products to mimic those types of sizes. And what we have here is we, it ranges all the way down, all the way into the 600 megahertz for more of the LTE frequencies and then all the way up into the 5 gigahertz with the Wi-Fi, but we offer antenna solutions that are also outside that spectrum. Got it. Okay. That's a huge range. 
So I've designed with a lot of different types of antennas for different applications. So talk to me about what form factors you guys have available and why are there so many different ones out there? There are a lot of different form factors of antennas out there. And what we've had to do is we've had to narrow down those types of structures to offer a standard product list. The different products that are offered are attended to what the market has shifted us towards. An example are these PCB antennas that we offer, metal, stamp metal antennas with carriers, PCB or even an FR4 or PCB antennas with a cable can be mounted to the side wall of a housing, or we offer an FPC antenna, which is a flexible printed circuit antenna that you can mount onto a contoured housing that allows you to pretty much have a lot of flexibility. We have ceramic antennas, which range from all the way in the low 600 megahertz to the 5 gigahertz. A key aspect of form factor and technology is LDS. So what LDS, what you're able to do in this type of technology is to etch the actual antenna pattern into the plastic. And what that does is reduce the overall footprint for what an antenna will be inside that product. So your form factor will be shrunk down, which a lot of marketing people really enjoy, smaller products. And then also to extend onto our different offerings, we offer our external product line as well as our active steering and RFIC switches. Okay, so speaking of active steering, it seems like antenna technology has really been evolving recently with MIMO and beam forming and all of the other multiple antenna setups. So what are you guys doing in that space? So what we currently have and we offer today is an active steering solution. What this is, it's a closed loop functionality solution in combination with the proprietary algorithm that Ethertronics had designed mixed with a microprocessor. And what this solution gives you is a dynamic response to wireless environments to achieve optimal performance. What does that mean? What that means is when you take a product off the shelf and you put it into your home, I don't know the orientation you're going to put that into. So what we've done is we've created a solution that regardless of where you go, you're going to get the best performance that you can possibly have. Cool. So tell me a little bit about how active steering technology applies to the market. What kind of applications do you see? For active steering, what we see it is a lot of routers, set-top boxes, and also gateways that are located all around us. Mainly what people don't know is that you have these types of products everywhere in your gym, in your local sporting event facility, stadium. They're everywhere, but the problem is is being able to fine-tune these products to all these ever-moving people. And what we offer is we offer the active antenna solution to cover not only just the cellular LTE networks, dealing with mobile, automotive, and set-top boxes, but a wide range of access points in the Wi-Fi industry, as well as the Internet of Things, the IoT, the industry that's pushing all the products out nowadays, dealing in healthcare, security, smart metering, and tracking. Now, it's always seemed to me like testing is a huge challenge with antennas. You said earlier that you guys do your own testing and design your own tests. So tell me more about that. Testing is always a challenge, especially with the change in the product size and the way that customers and the networks themselves want these products to be tested. And so what Ethertronics has been able to do is be able to take and grasp with the knowledge and the experience that we have to generate five global design centers with 25 plus antenna measurement systems ranging from near field measurement to far field measurement chambers, MIMO measurement systems. And one thing that we proud ourselves in is our world class automotive test facility facility that we have over in Europe. We also currently are working on a millimeter wave measurement system for 5G that's going to be soon to hit the market. So it seems like these days I can't just grab any old antenna and solder it onto my printed circuit board and expect it to work. So as an engineer, Kenneth, what do I need to think about when I'm deciding what antenna design to use for my next project? Amelia, that is a question that is asked upon me on a daily basis. And the best way to answer that is to really get a grasp of the environment that you're working in. An antenna is a product of its environment. Without knowing the environment, you have no product. So in this case, what we look at is we first identify the frequency of operations. And then from there, we're looking at, depending on the uh, the product itself, the end product physical characteristics, the enclosures material, if it's uh, PCABS, 
if it's some type of ABS mixed in with some type of carbon. If it is, then we know that it's not going to have very good performance. Also, what we're looking at, and one key aspect of antenna design, people overlook the end product application. What is the function of this product of when the end user gets it in their hand? And from that, people don't understand that without that information, you're unable to design a product or an antenna in the proper location. You want to make sure you pull the product away from your hand, from any type of material loading. Other things for considering for the design of the antenna is which region are you going to be using this product in? Is it going to be for the Europe market or is it going to be for the US market? What we've seen, mainly just due to the fact that these products have shrunk so much, is the customer will come to us and say, we have a product that we would like to have a single antenna to service both Europe and US. After going through the evaluation stage, we'll come to the point where we'll see that this product itself is only capable to have either EU, Europe, or US functionality. So then we'll be able to share with them based upon our testing capabilities that maybe splitting the product into two different SKUs would be best. That way, both products will have optimal performance for that market. Got it. Okay. So if I tell you I'm designing a portable device that it needs to have Wi-Fi and cellular and Bluetooth and NFC, and my typical customer is going to use it in a tin can and lay it on top of a Wi-Fi router when they are trying to use it? I would say let's get started. <laughs> All right. So speaking of that, you mentioned that you have antennas that are tunable. So what are some of the key factors to think about when I'm tuning my antenna setup? Some key factors that you need to take in consideration is the matching of your antenna, so the return loss, and also the environment that the antenna is going to be placed in. Just because you may have some space to put an antenna doesn't mean the antenna is going to work. So in this case, what we'll see is we'll, when looking at the tuning basics, we'll look at what shifts the frequency of the antenna and how to achieve higher efficiency and how to reduce losses within the overall system. Path losses, material losses, and other items that affects the antenna performances and impedance matching tuning, surrounding electrical components, and just the overall placement of the antenna. As you can see, if an antenna is placed over a battery, the overall performance itself should degrade significantly. And so what we're able to do is we're able to show that concept here. So I need to take the antenna into consideration when I'm doing my board design? Correct. Okay, so can you walk me through a tuning example maybe? This is the current antenna that we offer. It's the 1932 PT. The PT stands for PCB, so this is a very rigid antenna, and the T stands for tunable. This type of product isn't currently offered that I've seen on the market. What this does is it allows the actual engineers themselves to tune the antenna on the fly while they're designing the product with guidelines that we have prepared for them. This current antenna right here is a 2.45 gigahertz antenna, and this one has within its Itself on a nice ABS plastic. It has about 60% at low band and 71% at high band. And a key thing that you want to start with when you look at a off-the-shelf product, if you start with an off-the-shelf antenna with low efficiency, you're going to always get an end with a product with low efficiency. So you want to make sure you look for that high performing antenna to pull that off because once it gets placed into your product, performance will drop. It only gets worse. It only gets worse, correct. Okay, got it. So if I put one of these on my board, how would I go about tuning it? Well, for this, you probably don't want to put it on your board. You probably want to place this on one of the side walls or the plastic housing. This type of antenna is made for an off-board structure design where it's still contained within the product, but it's off the board. And then it's fed through that cable to the radio module. So, okay, for the antenna tuning, to tune the antenna low, you'll see these tuning pads here. To shift the frequency low, you'll just go ahead and add some solder to bridge the gap to shift the frequency lower. Now, if you place this antenna in your product, and you see that the resonant frequency has shifted too low and you need to compensate that frequency and you need to tune that up higher, this antenna allows you with a minor cut in a specific location to shift this frequency up higher within your frequency band. Okay, so cut to go higher and fill to go lower? Correct. You're already halfway there. Okay, so what would I expect to see after this tuning process? So mainly for 2.4, that frequency compared to 5 gigahertz, you'll start to see different effects from the tuning. So that's been broken down into two phases. One is for the low band, which is for the 2.4. One is for the high band, which is 5 gigahertz. For this focus right here, this will show the shifts at 2.4. 
As you can see in blue, the antenna performance baseline is tuned in band. Now what happens is as you place this product onto some type of device, you get a shift. And that shift is seen due to the materials or the environment. To get this frequency back in band, what you have to do is you have to follow this procedure. Depending on, in this case, you have modes T1 through T4. That's to shift the frequency lower. To shift higher, you have modes C1 and C2, which allows you to shift the frequency higher, depending on where your overall baseline frequency is located. So, Kenneth, what about at higher frequencies? So at 5 gigahertz, the antenna resonance will be affected a little bit differently with the materials as it does at 2.4. So once you place this antenna onto some type of housing, it will shift. And depending on that shift, we need to compensate for that. And in doing so, what we offer, we offer different ways to shift the frequency lower by following modes T5 through T8. And the reason why this is important is because if your antenna itself is detuned, the module and the antenna will be mismatched. Well, then in itself, you'll probably end up creating and generating heat and then also battery consumption. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to allow the engineer to have a more insightful antenna to use while they're actually going through the implementation of the RF solution. So it seems like this tuning in my application would come in really handy in a lot of real world situations where you mount something in your device and it's not performing exactly the way the data sheet said because of some environmental factors. Correct. Excellent. Well, I think I'm going to click that link and check out the Mauser site for this topic and learn a little bit more. Okay, Kenneth, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, it was my pleasure. I look forward to our next visit. And before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about antenna design solutions from AVX. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or why don't you head on over to YouTube? Keyword EE Journal.